You clicked on this video. You saw the nerdiest title ever, and yet you are here. I question your intention. As for my intention, I just want to talk about Minecraft and math. Full disclaimer: I'm not a physicist yet, so take my words with a grain of salt. I literally used Wikipedia as a source for this video. So I've been messing around with the spread of skulls due to skull catalyst these past few days, and in doing so, I observed that the spread can likely be approximated by a random walk model. You see, upon activation, the skull catalyst sends out a cursor that moves randomly and skulkifies the blocks in its path. Perhaps by using a certain physics model, I could find the average time it's going to take the skulk to reach your base if it spreads endlessly. I decided to go with Brown in Motion since I remember hearing his name back in physics class. Brown in Motion describes the motion of a huge number of particles, each performing infinitesimal random walks, changing directions pretty much every time due to collisions. This model is often used to describe fluids like gases and liquids, since you know they have a lot of freely moving particles, and so it's also part of statistical mechanics and, by extension, thermodynamics. The model of the skulk spread is going to be based on these following assumptions. First, the spread only occurs in two dimensions on the x and z plane. Second, every direction of spread is equally likely. Third, each tick, each cursor moves one block of Manhattan distance, which means they can only go north, east, south, or west, no diagonals. And lastly, the number of skulk cursors remains constant. Of course, none of this is true in the actual game, and these assumptions are a vast simplification of how it works in game. For example, the cursors are more likely to spread to unskulked blocks than to ones already skulkified. But eh, we can ignore that probably. I just want to calculate, not fret over every single tiny detail. We'll go through this using the first part of Einstein's theory, in which he derived the diffusion equation of Brownian particles. So. Let's first define a vector delta as a two-dimensional vector that represents the movement of the cursor in time tau, which is equal to one tick. That means the vector delta will be one of these. They represent north, east, south, and west, respectively. In Einstein's theory, he also defined the function phi of delta, which represents the probability of the particle moving in the direction of delta. In our case, every cardinal direction has equal probability, so the value is always going to be one fourth for the four possible directions. It's obviously going to be zero for all other directions. I'm not going to plug in one fourth outright to stay true to the source material, I suppose. Next, we're going to have function rho telling you the density of the particle at position r and time t. In our case, it's going to be the number of cursors in that block. This function is an important function which we can use to derive many other things. So let's get this density function. The number of cursors at a block at the next moment in time logically would be equal to the number of cursors that decided to jump to that block during this tick, and that number is statistically the total number of cursors in the adjacent block times the chance of them jumping to this block, and we can write this as the following equation. Now, don't be intimidated by the integral sign. Thanks to our prior assumptions, this probability function is our saving grace, because the probability of delta is equal to one fourth for the four cardinal vectors and zero for any other direction vectors. We can turn this into simple addition. The vector n, e, s, w uh, are vectors that represent north, east, south, and west, respectively. This equation tells you the recurrent relation of the function rho. From this, we'll be finding the non-recursive analytical solution to this equation. To do so, the next thing we'll be doing is something called linear approximation. If we have a function at a certain input f a and we want to approximate its value at another input somewhat close to the original input, say f of a plus h, we can find the approximate value by simply adding the product of the small notch in input by the slope at that point. You can think of it as getting a tangent line at a point and walking along that line by hedge. It's clear that where you end up is pretty close to where the value of the function really is. And if you're not satisfied by the results, you can always get more precise answers by approximating it to the second order using the Taylor series. So applying this to the equation we got earlier, with the nabla symbol being the gradient, we get this. 
If we inspect the approximation on the right, you'll realize that every term cancels each other out. And something's obviously not right here because this equation implies that there is no movement of the cursors. And the mistake we've made was that we used only the first order approximation, which cancels each other out completely. That is, if we use the second order approximation as well, you'd end up with a longer, though more accurate equation. After cancelling the first order terms, every direction vectors are of the same size, and hence we can change every squared vector into the same vector squared, and let's say it, uh, delta. We can cancel out the 1 over 4 and cancel out the row function, and we're gonna end up with this differential equation. This equation, we can replace the Laplacian operator with the second order partial derivative with respect to r without the need to consider theta. Proof? Just think about it. The value is obviously going to be symmetrical, so we need not think about the angles. Conveniently, this differential equation has a solution, which I just looked up online. It's this. And here is the number of the cursors in the system, and we got the function that we wanted, the density function. This function tells us the, uh, obviously, the density of the cursors at each point in time and space. There's a lot that you can do with this equation. For example, you can find the density of the cursor at each point in time and space. You can also find the average displacement from the center of the spread by integrating it with r multiplied to it. And I'm gonna save your time and integrate it outright. It's fucking zero. This is because it's going left and right equally, so the average is right in the middle. A way to circumvent this is to find the root mean square, or RMS, of the value. By squaring the R, we avoid the problem of negative values cancelling out the positive, because going both ways yields positive values. If you want to integrate yourself, go ahead, I'll spare you the hassle and integrate it for you. The answer is R RMS is equal to square root of delta squared t over tau. R RMS here is the root mean square distance of the spread, and it's basically the average. And we notice that the average distance from the center is proportional to the square root of time. So for example, if the average reaches 10 blocks in 10 seconds, it would take 40 seconds to reach 20 blocks. With all of these calculations in place, I coded a program that simulates this golf curve's random walk following our assumptions. I'm not running this in the actual game because it's going to lag my computer quite a lot, and it's also going to be fairly inaccurate. Enjoy. Alright guys, thank you for watching. The calculations we've done here are obviously impractical due to the simplified conditions we've set for a random walk. However, practicality isn't really the intent of the video. I just wanted to apply concepts in physics or mathematics into Minecraft, and I'm hoping it piques the interest in some of you. I may have made mistakes throughout the video or explained something badly, so if you're interested, I highly encourage you to read further into these topics yourself and verify your understanding. As for some of you who got bored but somehow sat all the way through to here, congratulations, you've made it to the end. See you next video.